Did I ever tell you about that influencer that took advantage of me and 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 schmexually assaulted me? And she has multiple millions of followers. I didn't tell you that story. Let me. Okay, guys. Trigger warning. They talking about S A R A all types of shit. So if this is the trigger for you, you gotta go. This situation right here is tearing up TikTok, okay? So the first thing you gotta do is watch this whole thing. There's an influencer out there who lives on a bus. Used to travel on a bus with a boyfriend. Now lives on a uh, property with a bunch of fucking buses. Okay? And let's say I went over to this bus commune. And she's telling me all these crazy stories that are not true. And I'm just starting, I'm starting to sniff out uh, uh, someone that I wouldn't be friends with. There's one day that I, you know, I'm basically just trying to escape from this place because it's impossible to get out of buttfuck nowhere. Um, and she asks for my consent to do something to me, to which I say no. And she proceeds to do what she wanted to, to me. To which afterward I say, I didn't consent to that. She laughs. I leave the next day. Someone just comes and gets me because I was fucking scared. And after I'm gone, she's calling me. Why did you leave? She calls my friends that I'm with. And finally, I text her and I say, hey, girl, you schmexually assaulted me. Get the fuck off my phone. I'm blocking you. I don't want anything to do with you. I didn't want to tell this story for a really long time because it made me really uncomfortable to tell. And I still get a little shaky about it because I did feel really vulnerable in that moment. Um, and especially, especially because she continued to follow me, I guess, uh, waiting for me to say something. I don't know. Cause she would tell me that she would get fans to come to the commune and tell them that they can come hang out with them as long as they have a threesome with her and her boyfriend and then made these young 18, 19 year old girls sign an NDA. She then told me that I was going to have to sign an NDA, which I laughed at, which I laughed at. This girl followed me for the longest time and then unfollowed me a few weeks ago. Now, this person is already starting to be disliked on this app, which is brilliant for me because now I feel like I can come out and say my shit and I have other people who know what I'm talking about. I have, I have like a fan of theirs who came to me and told me that they were also taken advantage of by these people. Ooh, I just wait, cannot wait to hear what you guys are going to say to this. Wow. I, I think I know who she's talking about. There's a TikToker with 6.4 million followers that does this type of content. Her name is Sayla Brooks. She posts all types of content with her living in a van. Another thing is that she posts a lot of videos about being in a poly relationship with this guy named Theo. Oh. Let me see these comments. Rhymes with Sala Brooks, 49,000 likes, oh yeah. Sala Ugg, as soon as you said bus, she didn't even have to say her name and people know. This is bad. I'm proud of you for speaking up. I know it can be hard. This is a good example of what you want to say to a victim because often they're scared that they won't be believed and a lot of the times they get victim blamed. Now, I want to make this clear. If somebody commits an SA, the only person to blame is the person that commits the SA. Victims are never the blame for their own SA. We not doing that here. The reason I brought this up is because I know what's gonna happen in our comments, because people in these comments are fighting about how this situation should be handled. And trust me guys, I have a lot to show you, but we have to start with the right foundation. Somebody said, you got to release these text messages before she tries to deny it. Someone said, that's a weird thing to say. This girl says, it's weird to just say this about someone with not a lick of proof. This person says, because she shouldn't have to put text to prove it, we should just believe her. This girl says, I believe her. And in general, there should never be a place of just believing someone without any sort of evidence. That's how innocent lives get ruined. They're going back and forth. You know, a lot of SA victims don't have proof. And that's the reason why they aren't believed, right? You're part of the problem. 
She responded back saying, no, nah, I'm not, as I've also been essayed with no proof and no justice. You cannot just randomly throw allegations at someone, unfortunately. Now, one comment that I've seen a lot of people say, I would rather support a potential liar than a potential abuser. Oh, some, something's not quite right with this statement. I don't know if I can be okay with sentencing a human being without evidence. Because what if I'm wrong? See, th and this is why this shit gets hard to talk about. Now, someone's going to say, Derek, that's unlikely. This study says it's complex, but it's roughly 5%, could be more or less. But then are we saying it's now okay to put people in jail with no evidence because it's a low percentage? That's kind of fucked up to not care about the people that got false reported. But it's also fucked up that 50% of these SAs are getting away with this shit. Now, guys, here comes the meat and potatoes. Someone said, after hearing other victims come forward, I believe her. I'm like, other victims? So, guys, I did the digging so you don't have to. Four other people came out and said they had a similar experience as Meep. Now, one person is like, okay, well, her word against her. So, you know, but five different people, it don't look good. It's either one, Sayla has been doing this for a while, or two, people are bandwagoning on like a hate train because they don't like her. I don't know. The reason I'm saying this is because just like Meep said, there's a growing fan base of people that dislike Sayla. Like, see, I knew I never liked Sayla, 13,000 likes. And that's before this video came out. There's even a Shayla snark page on Reddit, which is basically just a place where 2,700 members just shit posts about Sayla. Look, even the Kardashians have a snark page. Originally, snark pages was used to hold celebrities accountable, but lately it's been getting dark and people have been using these pages to show how they're annoyed with a celebrity or like sometimes low-key bully. They've been at it for a year, so I wouldn't be surprised if they're like jumping for joy right now. And I also wouldn't be surprised if people say or do malicious things because they just want her gone. One thing I know is that people are annoyed with her talking about her poly relationship, and it's kind of taboo. Another thing is like a Burning Man comment. Basically, it seems that she was mentioning how her day was going and that people died, and people thought she was like being inconsiderate about it. And I read a comment where someone said, I can't trust her because her feet was dirty in this video. I guess she was in Walmart and some people was like, I just can't trust someone with dirty feet like that. I don't know, guys. Now, we're going to start with Jade's video because supposedly she knows Sayla the most out of, like, these five. It seems like they were really good friends, so we're going to hear her out first. So I'm, like, really, really shaking right now, but it's been um, three years since I've been comfortable enough to talk about this, um, mainly because someone else has come forward about it. And um, up until now, I felt like, you know, she had such a big following and there was no reason for me to talk about it and she could destroy me on this app and whatever. But now I feel like I'm super comfortable enough to talk about it. So I've... I, she, this other creator did not um, specify her name, but I am going to. So I have known Sayla um, since middle school. We went to middle school together. We went to high school together. And, you know, she came to visit me while I lived in Colorado. I came to visit her when she was in College Station going to A&M. Um, so we've known each about each other a lot. But um, And I don't know if you guys remember, but when Sayla was first born, uh, blowing up she went by uh, curly and crazy as her username and um, which I you know taught her how to use TikTok because I was blowing up at the time and I was you know I told her she could do the same thing and um, so we reconnected that way after I came back from Colorado and um, so anyways so this was my experience um, not only did she drug, like drug me and also they consulted me um, all in one night. So here's the story. Never told anybody about this except for my close friends. But um, so I went to go visit her in College Station one time. Um, and um, at the time, she was living at this apartment. And um, I had just came out to my parents and, and I got kicked out for it. And so I went to go visit her. And um, she um, was really wanting to party, and I had never tried anything before, and she basically shoved it in my mouth. She was like, drink this, take this, and um, got me to the point where I, I didn't even know where I was and what I was doing. I was very out of my mind. I don't even know how we ended up back at her apartment. All I remember is that I was laying down in the bed, and she was doing what she wanted to do and um I was so 
like up and crazy and like I really didn't know what was going on I really can't describe the experience but I do remember it and the next morning um I tuck tailed and I ran I like I was like I gotta go she was like oh well you're not gonna do anything for me and I was like uh sorry I'm not feeling good I'm gonna go home I'm gonna go look at take care of my cats that I left at my parents house so I left um and I felt really weird about it I didn't really know what happened um and I was like, maybe I consented to it. Maybe I was okay. Um, you know, we were both really, really, you know, high. And um, and maybe, you know, I consented to it. But I don't really remember. I just remember the feeling and me being weirded out by it and extremely weirded out by it by the morning. And so I left. <laughs> and it doesn't really... St- our communication doesn't really start there. I really should have um, ended our communication there, and a part of me did, but um, a part of me wanted to still be friends with her for some reason. Okay, so she went to hang out with Sayla. Sayla wanted to party. Sayla basically shoved medication and drinks down her throat. I'm guessing she means pressured, while knowing that she don't do those kind of things. And after hanging out later that night, she takes advantage of her. And I've heard of things like this before where people use like substances to like make a person have like an unsound mind and then like take advantage of them. If that was Sayla's intent, that's fucked up. Now I was wondering what if both people are fucked up? On the Hammer Law Firm, if the other person is aware that this impairment affects their ability to resist or consent, then they can be charged. But it doesn't clearly address the situation that involves two drunk people. It gets more complex. Another thing that she said is that when they woke up in the morning, Sayla initiated more stuff with her, and when she was done, she got up and was trying to leave. And then Sayla said, you're not going to do anything for me, like return the favor? I wonder why she would even expect that. And she took advantage of you again, but this time you were sober. She must have assumed that Jade was cool with it because she didn't stop her. But I have heard of victims that freeze up when they get shocked. Now, someone might say that she's like smiling a little too much in here. But just so y'all know, nervous laughter can be viewed as a defense mechanism subconsciously. It can happen when someone's overwhelmed with anxiety. Now, the video is nine minutes, so I'm summing up the rest of it. She said that she continued to be friends with Sayla. Later, they almost got an apartment together. But something happened when Sayla was invited to hang out with Jade and her friends. I guess she was being mean to them. And also, supposedly, like, she stole from Jade. One day, Jade decided to call up Sayla and let her know that she don't want to be friends with her no more. Supposedly, Sayla pulled up to her house with her phone out trying to make, like, an apology video. She stayed over one more night, and then Jade was like, hey, I just don't want to be friends with you. Things got heated, and it was decided. Sayla told Jade to not make a video about this situation, and they blocked each other right there. Now, guys, I'm going to sum up these two videos because there wasn't much said. This is Meg. Meg said that she had a similar experience as Meep. She said that she wasn't a fan. They were just like friends. Well, in here, she said talking to. I don't know what that means. She gave no detail about what happened and just wished the survivors the best. This is LL Gun. She said that she was hanging out with Sayla. They were supposed to go somewhere, so she came back home to shower. She walked into her bedroom with just a towel. Sayla said, come here, pushed her on the bed. LL Gun was like, what are you doing? And Sayla said, you're going to enjoy this. Just trust me. And she said that she got essayed right there. She said there was another person in the room, but she doesn't say names. I don't know if she's trying to insinuate that it was Theo. I don't know. Now, this is one of the newest ones. This girl's name is Sierra. And I wanted to just explain it, but I, I can't. So let's, let's just watch it. I don't come out my ear, but I'm also a victim of solos as well. Um, this happened to me about a year or two ago, I'll say. Um, I met her at a gas station. Um, I guess she was doing work for herself. I think this, you know, she was real popular on TikTok. And when I met her at a gas station, like, she was getting snacks and gas. And I was the, just there to basically like, get a real little whatever. A little like, cigar, whatever you, whatever you call it. Um, it's kind of hard for me to talk about it because, like... When it did happen or whatever, and I tired and feel comfortable about it, she basically told me, like, well, you know what I'm saying? If you say something, no one's going to believe you. You know, I got thousands of followers that's going to have my back. Um, they're going to say that you're not particularly the type of woman that I'll go for. And so I was like, so is that why you did it, even though I told you no? Um, she was like, she, she didn't say that, but, like, did that goofy laugh. She, she always do. Um... I really didn't understand it because I already have a problem with my sexuality if, if I like girls or not. And, you know, she knew that because, like I said, me and her talked or whatever. I let her know that, you know, I was trying to come up as well on social media platforms, being influencer and stuff like that. And she told me she could help me and stuff like this. So I don't know if she felt like it was okay 
to do that because I, you know, I guess she said she was gonna help. I was, she was gonna help me. Um, she, she kissed me, but the kiss wasn't like a regular kiss. It was like she tried to like French kiss me, and I like kind of pushed her back, and then she kind of like pushed me. We almost got into an altercation. But, like I said, I was in her stuff, in her property, so I already knew if I was, like, us to fight or anything like that, I'm a black woman. So, they were automatically going to look at me as an aggressor, because a black woman is always mad, you get what I'm saying? And she was already kind of painting a picture that even if I did come up and say something, even her followers or other people on TikTok won't believe me, was because I have a darker skin complexion than her, and that she just has million followers. I am glad that someone did come out and say something because I feel like she done this to, to a lot of girls and I also feel like me gave a platform for us to talk and say something and to speak up I feel like if I would have never run across her video this would have still you just would be in the back of my head something that I think about every day so I really want to thank you for coming out and sharing your experiences so other girls like me can also come out and you know say something and stand up to her okay so like what I got from this one she ran into Sayla at the gas station I'm not really sure how it progressed because she kind of like skipped over it. But I'm guessing she ran into Sayla at the gas station and then Sayla just immediately like invited her over or exchanged numbers and invited her a different day, supposedly, and then kissed her. They fought and then she left. And she said that no one's going to believe her because she's a bigger black woman, which I guess could be a good target for a predator. Why you say her name like that? Soulless. Okay, guys, so here's what y'all was waiting for. With all of these allegations ripping up TikTok, after three days, Sayla responded. People have been sharing vague stories about me that insinuate terrible things, and I feel the need to address that and set the record straight. I'm a sexually active person, and I've never hid that from any of my partners. In my last relationship, we were open and polyamorous, which means we were both willing to let other people be a part of our sexual activities. However, it was always consensual, and it was always safe. And there was never NDAs. There was never a need for NDAs. That kind of lifestyle, it can be exciting and it can be adventurous, but we're all human and we all catch feelings. And that's where things get complicated because communication breaks down and feelings get hurt. And in no way is that kind of lifestyle a hall pass for inappropriate behavior. You always want partners who are willing to engage in safe and consensual sex. But that's why these stories being thrown around so carelessly are so hurtful. One is from a longtime friend and consensual sexual partner who never voiced any concerns to me until she decided to share it and multiple other lies about my childhood to her TikTok platform. I am so sorry to hear she's hurting right now, but it cannot be because our interactions weren't consensual. In fact, she initiated sex with me the morning that she left my house, and we made good friends and in contact for over a year. Another is a girl who I had a long-term consensual sexual and romantic relationship with, and she asked me to leave my partner for her, which is something I did not want to do. However, despite how it ended, we remained good friends and in contact as into July of this year. And then there's a woman I never had a sexual relationship with of any kind. And that's the video you've all seen of her cutting up the salmon with the knives. We never even kissed. She's trying to turn a playful joke that my friends and I do with each other into something that's sinister. However, I can see in retrospect how it's not that funny. However, it was in no way intended as sexual. I am not sure why these girls are making these videos, though I can say that only they know but it has been good for their follower account, it has been good for their views, and it has been good for their revenue. Guys, I will accept responsibility for situations that got emotionally messy, but as a survivor of sexual assault, I know what it's like to be the target of a predator, and I would never put anyone else through that kind of shame or trauma. To suggest that I'm capable of hurting someone in that way is not only wrong, but it is a lie, and I will not let people sit back and lie about me. I appreciate the support from my friends, and thank you guys for taking the time to watch this. This is messy. Okay, let's get into this. Sayla said that Jade was actually a long-term friend and consensual partner. So does that mean they were sexually active before this situation? I don't know. And then also said that Jade is the one that actually initiated in the morning. Now, Sayla says that one of the girls was a long-term sexual partner and had a romantic relationship with them, and that girl wanted her to leave her current connection. I'm assuming she's talking about Meg. Because three videos went viral and this is the only one that didn't have like something to line up with it. Maybe that's what she means when she said they were talking. I don't know because she didn't really actually give any information about what happened. Now the crazy thing is with Meep, she said they didn't do not one thing sexual, not even kiss. Meep also did not say what Sayla did. 
if nothing happened between them and she didn't even kiss you, I'm trying to figure out like what happened, like what did she do? And also, what was the joke that we're talking about here? What is the joke? Neither of them brought it up. Now guys, I just woke up today and some new stuff came out. A girl is claiming that she has text between Sayla and Meep. And was basically used the hard drive or something for her. And so she let me actually have this other phone. What's crazy is I had no idea about me putting my phone number into the phone. Our lives would sync and I get all of her texts. You get all my texts. We became one, essentially. Because of this, I have all the texts that she sent, meaning that I have a little bit of proof about the allegations that are out there right now. Just because this story is literally crazy that a stranger gave me her phone. Here's a photo of me with the phone. You can see the date right there. Here's the back of the phone proving that this is the phone. So here's the phone. Here's the photo app right here. Photos of her. Literally can scroll anywhere throughout this phone. Wow. More photos of her. It's obviously wow. the phone. Now let's get into these texts. After watching the salmon cutting video made by Nipasaurus, or Sydney is her real name, I immediately assumed grape. After reading the text, I can definitely assure you it was not grape, and it actually, I understand what Shatila meant when she said joke in the video, because I actually we do it with all of us and our friends. So right here you can see that she said before putting your... Okay, Sydney, which is Meep, said extensively and made me alarmingly uncomfortable by asking for my consent, to which I said that's not consent, before putting your boob on me. I feel like you totally knew I was feeling off, but if not, I truly wish you well and ha happy healing, but I'm not going to be treated like that. She said, whoa, Sydney, what? We need to talk because there's been some crazy miscommunication. Okay, I'm not finna hold y'all, guys. This whole time, I thought she got graped? Or like, Sayla, like, felt up on her or something. Not saying that this can't be bad, but she made it seem like she would... I, I, she could be uncomfortable with talking about it, but like, just saying, hey, she put her boob on me, I feel like she should be able to be talked about but maybe i'm wrong now also like is that sa for putting your boob on someone are those genitals because i know like if a guy put his genitalia on you that's definitely sa and, like for sure but i wasn't sure if boobs are also genitalia it says here genitalia mean the parts of a human anatomy including the pubic area anus perineum or the breast of any female but not men's breast, okay? Because breasts are considered a part of the reproductive system for women. So if I put my boob on a girl, that's not SA. Because it's not genitalia, I guess. Okay, okay. I'm guessing this is what they mean by the fucking joke. She said it's not a funny joke, but it wasn't meant to be sexual, which I can see now. What she's referring to in that case is we all waddle up to each other and plop a titty on our heads. I'm genuinely sorry for laughing at this. This is not something to laugh about whatsoever. Essay is a serious matter, obviously. It's just, I've seen it in person and yeah. That said, I have no idea how Sydney felt in the situation. I wasn't there for the encounter. So again, I have no comment on the actual scenario itself. I wanted to clear up exactly what she meant when she said she Sayla asked to do something to her and she said no and Sayla then proceeded to do. This is not me defending Sayla in any videos that have been posted. This is just me sharing what I have at my disposal. As far as Jade's video, the texts are too far back, so this phone does not have them, um, as I can't give any proof or insight as to that situation. However, Meg, let's look at those. After doing a little bit of scrolling, I did notice a little bit of a falling out, as you can see here. It's obviously about the they're working on with one another, I'm not really too sure. Um, those are forgive and forget situation, because you can tell that they stay friends afterwards, chatting about building band life or something. Yep, this is Meg, and yep, they were talking till July. And you can see her saying, can I call you tonight? So I'm guessing, like, yeah, they had a thing. Okay, so guys, just because I don't got, like, the time for the BS, I'm not making, like, an opinion. I'm just putting everything on the table so that you don't got to go around fucking looking for it. And you can decide. All right, guys. As I always say, <sighs> what do you think about this?